We are nearing the end of the 2022 Global Football Positional Preview Series. We will discuss the linebackers on today's episode of the show. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. I want to take this time, as always, to personally thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. We are nearing the end of the positional previews for the 2022 Louisville football season. There are two left. The first of the two will be dedicated to the linebacking position. Um, The first segment will be uh, dedicated to the middle linebackers, the outside linebackers in the second segment. And then in the final um, segment, we will discuss some of the breakout candidates. So uh, the good thing about it um, is that we don't have to predict the depth charts any longer because the media guide that has been released has released the final, or the final, the first initial depth chart for the Louisville football team this upcoming season. The middle linebackers, Monty Montgomery and Momo Sonogo, are the listed starters. Dorian Jones and Jalen Alderman are backups um, behind Monty. KJ Cloyd and Jackson Hamilton are listed as backups behind Momo. Um, Just kind of some... Uh, first initial thoughts, uh, we, we heard from Ben Souders on the Cardinal Sports Zone podcast that Monty Montgomery looks fantastic following his um, ending uh, season-ending uh, knee surgery last year. Uh, season-ending knee injury, not knee surgery. Knee injury, I guess you could say surgery. Uh, but his knee injury in that third game of the season against Central Florida um, that saw his replacement, Jalen Alderman, score the game-winning touchdown. Um Needless to say, Monty is back. It's been a long road to recovery, but he looks great in the weight room, looks solid on the field. Um, All accounts from Monty is that he's ready to have a fantastic season. Uh, By all accounts, I truly believe that if he was fully healthy last year, that we would have seen him declare for the NFL draft following the conclusion of last year. But um, I think that uh, this is a money year like it is for Malik Cunningham. It's also a money year for Monty Montgomery. So um, I think that, um, you know, with his ability to just lead the defense, when you look at, um, you know, some of the statistics from last year, uh, Monty Montgomery was one of the leading tacklers through the first uh, two games and some change. So, I mean, it was um, obviously a big loss. I think that Dorian Jones and Jalen Alderman did a very respectable job in terms of filling in for Monty. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's very, very hard to replace that, hard to replace a guy that's so critical when it comes to, you know, just tackling in the run department, but also getting after the quarterback and spying on opposing quarterbacks. So um, no surprise here. I mean, Monty Montgomery is you know, likely going to be the vocal leader of the defense. What we saw coming with uh, Muhammad Momo Sonogo, the transfer from Mississippi, um, you know, being the other starter, it, it, it's nice to see that, you know, he's a lot of times with, with transfers, sometimes it's, and we say that with Jermaine Lallet on the depth chart, although he's a very late addition, sometimes transfers don't always start out as starters because they have to earn their way. And it, it, it might take them some time, may take some, some time into fall camp, but, um, you know, you have Momo Sonogo that's kind of coming right away and, and really been able to, um, you know, establish his role. Uh, he's been, you know, you know, veteran leg guy. Uh, you know, he's had some, you know, times where he's, you know, not played a lot. You know, in 2017 and 2019, had over 100 tackles in 2018. Um, you know, 60 tackles in 2020, and he had 25 in 2021. Um, a couple sacks to his name, uh, one and a half in 2021, and one sack apiece in 2020 and 2018. Not a guy that gets after the court a lot in terms of converting those over into sacks. But he is able to go sideline to sideline. Um, really does a good job of finishing tackles, completing tackles. Um, you know, gets after the ball really well, and just overall gets involved in the plays. You know, I, I kind of liken 
Momo Sinogo, kind of to Keith Kelsey. Keith Kelsey really wasn't truly known so much as getting after the quarterback as just getting involved in every single play. It seemed like Sean Moss said Keith Kelsey's name. If he said it 10 times, he said it 100 times throughout the season. I mean, he was involved in almost every play. And I think that that's kind of what we're going to see from Momo Sanogo, a guy that's just going to be able to fly around the field and just give you um, you know, his his all every single play. And it kind of fits uh, right in with Monty Montgomery as Monty is, you know, fits into that same mold, you know, sideline to sideline linebacker. But also – you have Monty that's really able to get after the quarterback, but you have some great outside linebackers that are able to do that as well. It's more so, you know, being able to captain the defense and and keep those guys, you know, in the in the secondary, you know, all, all on the same page and just being, you know, the communicative leader. And I like the fact that Scott Satterfield went to, you know, the SEC and got a guy that's very decorated in the conference that's played a lot of snaps at the SEC level, um, regardless of what you want to say about, you know, him not playing a ton in 2021. Um, I, I do think that this that was a great adjustment. Uh, addition for the Cardinals program, and I think it's going to pay off. You know, um, you know it's going to pay dividends uh, for what we're going to see on the field. The backups, um, for for the most part, Dorian Jones and Jalen Alderman. Um, it, it makes me feel better about the backups this season because those guys had to step into you know somewhat starting roles last year. Jalen Alderman, his first appearance for the Cardinals, what he do? He literally went out and won the game against Central Florida with a pick six. Uh, Dorian Jones had, had some big-time moments throughout the season. You know, Alderman also had some other you know, big-time moments throughout the season. So having that valuable experience, having a lot of meaningful snaps last season, and being backups to one of the best linebackers in the ACC and maybe even the, in the country, um, what it does is, you know, it, it kind of brings me back to the whole idea that when Scott Satterfield company came into this global program was about building depth and that's what they didn't have in 2019 and that's what they still struggle to have in 2020 started to finally get it in 2021 and now here we are in year four we're able to have this conversation of okay dorian jones and jalen alderman if, if you if you force them to go into a starting role again they may you know definitely rise to the occasion i think they have the talent but now in a backup role you can go you know two three deep you know at this set position and that's huge for you know, a team that had some injuries at the linebacking position last year. And I, I'm very, very excited to see what, you know, they're able to do at the one linebacking position. Then the, the other one behind Momo Sonogo, you have KJ Cloyd and, and Jackson Hamilton. KJ Cloyd came in as a Juco guy. And if you remember when he came into the program, um, when he committed, the rationale behind it, there was a lot of hype coming behind his um, you know, commitment, considering the fact that he didn't go JUCO because of grades or because he wasn't good enough because he was very, very good in high school, but he had a very horrific injury that he had to battle. He went to the JUCO route, and here he is um, you know, fighting his way to the Division One ranks. Uh, was very, very solid on special teams last year, but obviously a, not a lot of opportunity when you have guys like you know, Manji Montgomery, you have C.J. Avery, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, KJ Cloyd last year had 12 tackles, um, a lot of those on special teams as well. So uh, I, I'm very, very excited to, to kind of see how, how that goes. Um, just overall, ju just a very, very solid, um, you know, inside middle linebacking committee. Uh, Jackson Hamilton, a redshirt freshman, he he's one that I'm very interested to see, uh, considering you know him, him at that three spot. He's ranked just outside the top 900 in that Flyville 21 class, um, listed as a safety coming out of Roswell, Georgia, um, but in, in uh, but but he had a lot of guys going after him uh, coming into the program. Six one two zero five. He he's beefed up a, a good amount, you know, from what I'm hearing, and um, I, I'm interested to see. Um, what role he's going to play this upcoming season. It's worth noting um, that with these initial depth charts, you can't treat them as like, you know, set in stone, like gospel. You can't treat them as a gospel. Like they can't, you know, be, um, you know, you can't treat them as fact. Uh, I guess you could say uh, it's not set in stone. There's still a whole fall camp to be had. So some of these guys might fall down the depth chart. Other guys might rise up the depth chart. You just never know. Uh, but it's, it's nice to have an initial thought of, of how things are shaping out because, you know, you have, you have a good idea of everything. So, um, you know, having that experience, Monty Montgomery, Momo Sonogo is great because I think the linebacking core is, is you know, very instrumental for this defense, but it might be even more, 
comforting for me is the fact that we finally, maybe for the first time, you know, coming into the season, maybe we had it last year until we got some injuries early on, but we finally have quality depth in this program once again. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, we're going to move over into the um, outside linebacking outside linebacking committee, um, the two positions there, and talk about the starters and the initial reaction to that. We will do that here in just a second after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, eSports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered all across the board. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. BetOnline is where the game starts. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting this past week, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Moving forward um, into the outside linebackers, the depth chart, as I mentioned, has been released for the Louisville football team, the initial one heading into fall camp. Um, the two starting outside linebackers are uh, Yusir Abdullah and Ben Perry. Um, the uh, backups, Cam Wilson, Alan Smith listed as backups under um, Yasir. And then uh, behind Ben Perry, it has Marvin Dallas li listed. Obviously, no C.J. Avery, uh, no Jack Fago. So um, so there are some you know roles that need to be filled. Jack Fago really had a solid year last year. C.J. Avery was very solid as well, considering the fact that he led the team in tackles with 97. Um, so... You know, there, there are some roles that need to be filled, but Yasir Abdullah coming back, uh, leading the team in sacks uh, with 10 sacks. He had 61 total tackles. It's one of those things to where, um, you know, getting Yasir back honestly was a surprise to me. I thought that Yasir might have tested the NFL draft waters, but very, very um, you know, fortunate for the Louisville Cardinals that he did not and decided to come back. I said it once, I'll say it a million times. For Yasir Abdullah, this is a money year. Uh, if he turns in another double-digit sack uh, performance uh, throughout the season, we're talking, I think, in my opinion, you know, a day two uh, NFL draft pick with his size, you know, him adding weight. Um, you know, he, he mentioned yesterday, or not yesterday, I mentioned on, on the podcast, uh, uh, on today's episode, uh, there's two of them today. Um, he mentioned uh, this week's ACC Media Day, he's working on finishing tackles, working on his technique. He feels like the defense is playing a lot better, and he's working on just being an overall better leader, You know, just trying to model his game a lot like former Louisville Cardinal great Elvis Doomerville. Um, so Yasir Abdullah getting after the passer, I think that he's very valuable, in, in my opinion. Um, after Jermaine Lallet, maybe the second most valuable player on this Louisville defense that's no disrespect to any other guy on this team, but more so a testament to you know, him being a pass rusher and the value of having a high um, you know, a high motor pass rusher. Um, I, I would like to see him get a little bit more in the run game, but obviously, you know, when you have guys like CJ Avery, you're using him in a little bit of a different, um, a, a different role. But, but I am very, very excited to see what we can get from Yasir Abdullah here in what is likely to be his last year, uh, with the program. This might be his final year of eligibility anyway, but, but regardless, I, even if it's not, I do think that this will be his last year because I think he's going to go to the league. What's interesting to me is that the other starting linebacker, I would have projected it to be Marvin Dallas. That is not the case. Ben Perry listed as the other um, outside linebacking starter. And Ben Perry, uh, if you remember, was one of the big, uh, big-time safeties. Uh, in the Flyville 21 class, ranked just inside of the top 400, a four-star prospect. Um, Alan True had this to say about Ben Perry. Uh, you know, he's a long defender, covers a lot of ground with his stride, physical and run support. Um, so I see, you know, with that physicality, with his size at, at, at 6'3", 
um, you know, being more so kind of a, um, you know, a, a sideline to sideline type of guy. I, I, it doesn't really surprise me the fact that they're, you know, maybe looking to use him more um, as a linebacker, but I, I'm very, very excited to see him listed as a starter because he was supposed to be one of the, you know, the gems in the Flyville 21 class. So, so to see one of these guys, um, you know, here, um, you know, making a lot of moves in the offseason. I think that that really bodes well for the outside linebacking committee. Uh, the other guys, Cam Wilson, um, uh, Alan Smith, also uh, Marvin Dallas. Marvin was very, very solid in um, all, in, in um, I can't even speak, in, in special teams last season. Um, the main thing for Marvin, who I'm looking to see if I can find his, he had 21 total tackles. Um, and um, a half of a sack. I, I do really want to see him, um, you know, be some solid depth, which I think he will be. I think he he and KJ Cloyd will once again be very very um, big leaders in special teams, which special teams can win you games as well. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that is some uh, aspect of the game that you know it shouldn't be receiving a ton of significance because it definitely should. Um, I think that at the end of the day. This is an instance to where, you know, having that, um, you know, that depth, which is experienced, but that's played a good amount of snaps that has gotten the experience at the power five level. You have that from Cam Wilson as well. Cam Wilson, a former four star um, recruit, and I believe it was the 2020 class, um, uh, uh, Scott Satterfield's first overall class. Um, you know, Cam Wilson battled some injuries at the beginning of the season last year. And that's, that was another thing that, um, you know, kind of um, really sucked because I thought that we were going to see a lot of him throughout the year. Well, when he did see the field, you know, he made a lot of uh, big time plays, um, had some, you know, some solid tackles, Alan Smith. Um, I'm not sure how much we are going to see from him, but I do think, you know, having him there, uh, also a guy like TJ Quinn, a converted safety from the Flyville 21 class that has a frame that maybe fits him more as, as an outside linebacker hybrid. And you got to think when you're thinking outside the linebacker, the way that Louisville, um, you know, plays, you know, just because they're outside linebackers doesn't necessarily mean that they're playing, you know, you know, on the edge or they're playing, you know, in, in the box, but more so you may be outside kind of playing as, as a nickel cornerback, as, a, um, as a slot cornerback in some instances to where they're guarding other, um, you know, slot receivers in the nickel packages. So um, we'll, we'll kind of see what roles they, you know, TJ Quinn and Ben Perry have. I think that Ben Perry, you're going to see more, uh, more so obviously in, in coverage. Um, they have different names, obviously for the different positions. Um, we'll see if Nicario Harper uh, with his frame, I know he was listed as a safety on the depth chart. We'll see if he kind of plays in that, um, you know, that card role that uh, Marvin Dallas and Ben Perry are going to slide into. Uh, Popeye Williams is a is a player the the top uh, recruit from the Flyville 22 class um, that I told that I wouldn't mention as an edge rusher um, because you know in the three four defense kind of projects more as an outside linebacker um, I think that we're going to see some big time minutes or big time snaps from from Popeye Williams this upcoming season. Um, He's going to be a guy that we talk about in terms of uh, some possible breakout uh, candidates for this upcoming year. Um, so let's go ahead and transition over into that final segment. Um, if you're listening to this uh, on any streaming services, you're going to hear some implemented advertisements. So be weary of that. Um, stay tuned, relax, um, take a little break. Um, and, and we'll see you back here in just a second. If you're watching this on YouTube, obviously you're not going to hear those advertisements. So uh, just stand by. As always, I want to say thank you all for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. I know that content's kind of been very sparse over the past month or so. It has been the off season, but there has been some health issues that have risen for me. So um, hopefully, we are on the backswing of that. We are hopefully that is in the past, and we will continue to churn out content. There's going to be a lot of it over the next week, heading into when the season officially begins for the Locked On Louisville podcast in August. So be Sure to be, stay tuned, um, but it is free on all streaming services, including YouTube, five days a week, your team, every day. Talking about some uh, breakout candidates, well, we've already mentioned him, Ben Perry, 
and Popeye Williams. Two young guys, very highly touted, coming out of their respective recruiting classes that I believe are going to really make some big time, um, you know, snaps and big time production for. Excuse me, big time production for the Louisville Cardinals this season. We kind of read a little bit about Alan True, his um, his uh, scouting report for Ben Perry. I want to read it in full length. The National Recruiting Analyst for 24-7 Sports had this to say about Ben back in March of 2020. Long defender who looks like a prototype on the hoof, covers a lot of ground with his stride, physical in run support, and also excellent on blitzes. Showed good anticipation and ball skills both on film and in 7-on-7. Seven seven. Does not have verified speed times, but has good play speed. Big frame may cause him to move closer to the line of scrimmage in college if he keeps growing. Must continue to polish uh, man-to-man skills to broaden versatility. Can be a rover or a true safety at the next level. A lot of that will depend on growth, but combination of size and skill set is that of a power five starter. Once again, he is over six foot three, uh, beefed up a little bit in the weight room. Kind of reminds me a lot of like a Rajay Burns playing that card role. Um, you know somewhat maybe as a little bit of a cornerback, but just kind of as a hybrid role. And I think that, that that's an interesting situation to where, um, you know, Scott Satterfield company is starting to see that talent uh, sort of fit the understanding and internalization of the playbook to where, you know, he's now listed as the starter. Obviously, I don't think that this is going to be a battle to where it's, it's set in stone because you have a guy like Marvin Dallas and if Nicario Harper slides into you know the in, into the card position um, category, well then you definitely have a solid um, a position battle on, on on your hands. But I, I'm very very excited for Ben Perry because you watch his film. Um, it's obvious that he he is very very vicious in terms of his pursuit. Um, just plays very very hard. And, and I he was one he was probably um, the guy that I felt like had the highest ceiling in the Flyville 21 class. So I'm very excited to kind of see how that works so um yeah i think that ben perry is going to take a lot of people by storm he's a guy that will he lead louisville in tackles year one well perhaps not but i think we're going to see him be a guy that you know forces more than you know three turnovers or so or has more than three sacks he's going to be a guy that just makes plays all over the field and i'm very very excited for that very interested to see what uh his role looks like in the season a guy that i'm taking a little bit of a um Kind of a very, uh, I don't even know the word you, that, that I'd be looking for, a very hopeful approach for in year one uh, is Popeye Williams, the highest rated signee in the Flyville 22 class, ranked inside of the top 200 and ranked 180th in the 2022 class, regardless of, of position, the 17th best, best edge rusher in the class. Allen had this to say about Popeye in uh, September uh, of 2021 he's a twitchy edge rusher with some explosive qualities seems very well um very well schooled also has a subtle dip which makes it tough for offensive linemen to get a clean punch on him his lateral agility also makes it tough for blockers to get their hands on him and pass protection he does a nice job with his hands he is quick and assertive with those he shows good closing ability short uh, closing ability um Short area explosion as well. He plays with a good motor. The main concern is his size. He's over 6'2 and around 225 pounds. He will have to show he can anchor in against the run against bigger college offensive linemen. He is a really good player and has some good athletic qualities. He is going to be able to rush the passer and, based on his technique and work ethic, has a great chance to be more than a be more than that 4-3 weak defensive end or maybe a 3-4 outside linebacker, which is is kind of where he um, is fitting into that mold. Uh, obviously, Ben Souders has done a great job of transforming guys in the weight room. I would expect that to be the case here with uh, Popeye as well. I just think that with the talent, now like I said, you have to you know focus on context because he's not going to be a guy that comes in and, and plays every snap or is a starter by the end of the year in my opinion, but I think he's going to be very solid when it comes to uh, valuable depth. He could be a guy that gets over two sacks uh, for this team. Um, is very solid in getting after getting after the quarterback. Just has a lot of talent. This is one of those things where I'm I'm opting uh, for talent here. He's one of the most talented guys I think that this that this staff has brought in in terms of true freshmen. So I'm um, very very excited to see what Popeye Williams brings to the table. Um, I think Ben Perry's more more so. Um, 
uh, going to be more of a breakout star as you know, as Popeye Williams is going to be like a breakout contributor. I don't think that this is going to be a star year for Popeye, although he's going to have some very, very meaningful snaps um, in, in some key positions. But I think that this is going to be a great opportunity for him to learn and to kind of be like Ashton Gelati and maybe not necessarily have a starting role by the end of the season because he is playing behind Ashton Gelati. Um, but a, a guy that is playing some very significant minutes or snaps, not minutes, this isn't basketball, playing some very significant snaps for a team that has some you know veteran presence on this defense. And, and for a true freshman, that, that would be huge. But I think Popeye Williams, I'm going out on a limb here and saying that he and Ben Perry are the breakout candidates for this defense. So that's all for the linebacking committee. A lot of uh, veteran leadership, a lot of proven depth with experience. It should be a very, very good season for the Louisville linebacking core. The final Positional preview will be over the next couple of days. That will focus on the cornerbacks and the safeties, also known as the secondary. So that's going to wrap up this special Saturday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here very, very